Dear friends, we discussed about the basic principles and pedagogical background of sustainable education competencies. In this context, we have discussed about different strategies for development of competencies. We have classified these strategies as group teaching learning competencies under five heads. One is cooperative learning, another is peer learning, another is peer tutoring, then co-teaching and integration of technology in group-based teaching learning competencies. When I talk about cooperative learning, cooperative learning means a pair of students or more than two students who work together to accomplish the objectives of curriculum. When we talk about learner's participatory approach in achieving the objectives of curriculum, we are talking about social interdependence as the basic principle. There are two types of social interdependence. One is positive interdependence. It means a group of learners, they participate together, they take active role in learning to achieve the common goal of a team. Another is negative interdependence. It says that a group work together with a belief that they can achieve the goals <coughs> when their competitors fail to achieve the goals. Means when another team fails in comparison to one team, then one team becomes a successful team. There are different steps of formal cooperative learning means the cooperative learning organized in classroom situation under the supervision of institution and leadership of a teacher. The first step is a teacher will have to introduce the task of a lesson for cooperative learning. And since we say that it is a group work, a teacher will have to formulate the class into different groups. So each group may be a five to six students group. And these groups will be provided learning resources. As you know, the classrooms are nowadays called as the resource centers. So a teacher will have to provide academic resources to be utilized by different groups to conduct their projects. And a teacher will have to assign the roles to different groups and subgroups to achieve the objectives of curriculum. Then the teacher engage the learners and teaching work proceeds and learning in cooperative manner takes place. There are different types of cooperative learning. Mm. One is tutoring. Another is class-wide peer tutoring. Third one is class-wide peer tutoring with curriculum-based measurement. Fourth one is cooperative learning structures student's team learning model. 
Now, if you see one by one, that it means that each class will have to undertake some organize some activities which will be in tune with different learning objectives. So the cooperative learning, the characteristics means we will have to learn together to achieve the curricular objectives. Second one is that the students are engaged in the project activities which can be called as a group based in investigations. There are different stages of group investigation. When I say group investigation, we are exploring a topic to be investigated by a group of learners. So since it is a self-directed learning approach, the students themselves identify the problem and they decide the project to be undertaken by them. So each group is involved in planning the investigation that how this problem will be solved, how this project will be undertaken. They prepare the design of conducting the investigation. Then the group conducts the investigation as per the design of the project. The fourth one is once they conduct and they are involved in different activities, they gather evidences and they collect experiences about such activities and they report that what they did and how they did. After the report is presented, then it is to be assessed by uh, the uh, teachers, peers and other stakeholders. What are different methods of uh, presenting these evaluation reports? The group members present their report, they are evaluated and such evaluation reports are communicated to the concerned students so that they can reflect on their performances. Now we will talk about different methods of cooperative learning. There are many methods of cooperative learning. So most popular methods of cooperative learning are the student's team's achievement division method, team assisted individualization method and jigsaw Aronson method. Now we'll talk about jigsaw Aronson method. Since it involves very systematic steps of conducting the group activities in a classroom condition. The first one here is that we form different groups on the basis of the interest of learners and the groups are formed in random form also. So we segregate different units of the content or a concept or a project and it is in tune with the groups which are divided into different segments. Each segment consists of five to six parts and the content or the projects having five parts are assigned to the students. So when students are assigned the task inside a group, each student will have to do some activity in the context of the project. So one part except the sixth one. So among six students, five persons will be given five parts of a project work. The sixth one will share 
with others. The students motivate each student studies the part unit wise or sub unit wise. During study sessions, the members of each group they do their own task. And in the team, each member does teaching to the team members or make presentations to the team members on the part assigned to him or her. Then the students get exposure to all the students' activities in a group. They motivate one another and get exposure to peer presentation and they listen to each other. At the completion stage, the test is administered to the groups. So in a class, if it is divided into five to six groups, so all the students will take the test. The students' individual achievements is judged by teacher and the group achievement is also judged by the teacher. The elements of cooperative learning. The first element is the positive goal interdependence. The students share their experiences, they interact with each other, they participate in different activities cooperatively. So it is the interdependence of learners and they may make use of their own abilities up to the best in group situations. Second is individual accountability. It is not led to one or two leaders in a group, rather each and every student participates and takes responsibility of the task assigned to him. Third one is the face-to-face -face promotive interaction. The positive interaction takes place among students and dialogue and communication with each other takes place at every stage of execution of the project. Appropriate use of social skills, the communication, appreciations, the reactions, the observations, all these activities take place. So in a group, the people know how to maintain cordial relations with each other, appreciating each other and contributing their best to achieve the goals of instruction. The fifth one is the group processing. Since it is a group environment-based approach of learning, so in a classroom setup, we'll have to see that how groups work together and conducive learning environment is maintained. Now, these are the dimensions of cooperative learning and the different strategies have been evolved over the past few decades by different persons on cooperative learning strategies and you can be exposed to such activities uh, if you study in detail about different strategies of cooperative learning. The second aspect of group learning uh, is peer learning approach. When I say peer learning, the learners learn together and learn from each other. So children learn by working with others, they help each other and they work collectively to achieve the goal concerned with the benefit individually and socially. So children in a group get a lot of benefits from working with each other. It can be done in informal, non-formal and formal settings. In peer learning, the major benefit is the development of social skills of learners. Different studies have been conducted. The researches reveal that when students get exposure to work in informal situations, so they develop social skills like active listening, listening to others, stating ideas freely and clearly to the peers, accepting the responsibilities for own action and sharing the tasks done by each other 
and making decisions democratically on the basis of consensus. There is no fight among each other. If the conflict arises, they resolve through amicable discussion and dialogues. And it helps us to understand each other, to understand the other's perspectives and to reflect on own ideas and to revise it. Now, when we talk about peer learning, there are different perspectives for development of learning and learners. So, there is a cognitive development perspective of peer learning. If you see the cognitive learning uh, specialist, Jean Piaget, worked on the stages of cognitive development and giving appropriate input at different stages of cognitive development. You know very well about these strategies. Second one is Vygotsky's perspective of social scaffolding. You know he talked about the social experience and cultural experience influencing the cognitive development of learners. The third one is co-construction of knowledge with peers. The fourth one is cognitive elaboration perspective. Now, let us analyze uh, each of these perspectives. As you know, Piaget insisted on resolving cognitive conflicts arising between the existing understanding or the past learning with what learners get new exposure to the contents and the concepts in a new situations. So, the new exposure to students are to be assimilated and accommodated in our development process. So, in this context, learners get exposure through peers and they help each other to get clarifications for cognitive development. In this context, we got to see ideas of social constructivism that talked about our experience which we get from our culture, from our home, from our community with which we build our uh, knowledge and we construct the new concepts. He talked about more knowledgeable and competent persons help less knowledgeable and incompetent uh, learners or less competent learners. So, the more experienced person can facilitate and provide support to learners. So, in peer learning situation, we have the tradition of classrooms where senior scholars or senior classmates or more knowledgeable um, classmates, they help their less knowledgeable or less experienced classmates, particularly in the context of games, sports, dramatizations and many such activities. This requires the process of scaffolding and supporting the learner who cannot solve a critical problem on his own by making use of his previous exposure. So, by making use of resource-based learning, the seniors and colleagues and co-learners, they help each other to solve the problem. Next is the co-construction perspective. It says that when students are exposed to information and explanations given by their co-learners on any issue, they generate new ideas. One learner may have his own idea, but when he gets exposed to others' ideas, that helps the building new strategies for solving problems. Next is cognitive elaboration perspective. It says that when a peer goes to teach another peer, he becomes prepared and he reflects on his preparation, how well he can deal with the content and the experiences when he is going to interact with others. So, interaction among co-learners encourages learners reconstruction of knowledge and understanding. So, a peer who goes to explain something, he gets involved in the process of rehearsing himself. 
what I will do, how I will do, what kind of expectations learners can have from myself. So, a senior t- learner is preparing himself or herself by recognizing and clarifying the content and interpreting the concepts in his own ways by making use of experiences. So, he internalizes new ideas and acquires new strategies and use innovative approaches to deal with his own peers. So, cognitive elaboration perspective makes a peer tutor to be ready to deal with different situations arising in peer learning. There are different peer learning strategies. One is altering expectations and status relationships. Some becomes a listener, some becomes a tutor, some becomes a team leader, others become followers. They assign different roles to each other. Each student does the role as per their own classification and decisions taken by them. It helps to develop group reasoning skills. They think, they argue, they cross-argue, they appreciate, they review, and they reflect on different ideas. And it helps them to do the works in group with good appreciation. Then structuring peer interactions. How interaction will take place, a tutor may help them so that it can be structured in the context of certain ideas or certain classification of activities. Then reciprocal teaching. They, you know, one uh, will be a tutor and others will be listeners. One will be a leader and others will be followers. One will lead one activity. Second time, second person will take lead in another activity. So such type of reciprocal teaching by sharing of role that takes place. Then explanation prompts that whatever activities we do, we will have to go for explaining why it happened and what are the reasons behind that and they develop critical thinking abilities by explaining the cause and effect relationships about their participation in conducting a project. Then guided reciprocal question query. So guided reciprocal questioning takes place that when the peer tutors, they are guided by the mentor teachers that how they will have to go for questioning and formulate new questions on the basis of their experiences. Then another approach is structured controversy approach. So different conflicting situations are raised in a more structured manner and in relation different characters and different conflict oriented situations are projected by a teacher and the students are asked to deal with different conflicting situations to arrive at the best possible solutions. Another is cognitive role specializations. So cognitive role specializations is particularly in case of role playing, different characters and different critical situations that occur and they take different roles and they specialize that who will do what kind of task. And manipulating the group or task. So how the group activities will be conducted and how interventions will take place in the natural situations so that the social problems can be resolved and that can be uh, a role model for their own learning. So these are different strategies for peer uh, learning. Now we will talk about peer tutoring. Peer tutoring is a participatory approach where the peers, they tutor others for development of certain skills and knowledge among students without demanding a great deal of individual attention of their teachers. As you know that we assume that in a learner-directed situation and particularly we will expose you to different kind of participatory activities as a matter of this project in face-to-face learning situations. So procedures involved in peer tutoring. There are different kinds of peer tutoring. One is one-to-one interaction. One, the dialogue-based interaction. One becomes a tutor, another becomes a learner. 
another is class wide peer tutoring that a student as a tutor he gets prepared to make presentation on a topic to the whole class third one is class wide peer tutoring with curriculum based measurement this is not a non formal activity it is a peer teaching will take place and others will follow and then assessment will take place on that unit which is being taught by a particular uh, tutor the uh, next three the cooperative learning peer tutoring structure student team learning model as i said you that in case of cooperative learning we go for the structured activities assigned to each group and each group perform certain activities through participatory approach so these are different dimensions of peer tutoring there are different procedures involved in peer tutoring we go for organization of peer tutoring first second is we monitor the peer tutoring third we communicate to students about their participation fourth we observe and give prompts and cues to students fifth we demonstrate and we practice sixth we ensure independent practices and interdependent practices and next is review class wide responses now we are going for the co teaching in co teaching we are going for two or more teachers as we say as team teaching we take the responsibility of teaching to all students in sharing different activities by each other the co teaching involves the distribution of responsibility among tutors in different activities two or more tutors collectively plan teaching deliver instruction assess learners progress in studies and do the classroom management when you talk about orientation of teachers in co teaching it is very much essential because it is a group based activities among the tutors so we must have understanding of co teaching as an essential element of teaching we must agree on the goals and objectives of instruction and we must set our rules we learn about each other's beliefs and teaching styles so two or three teachers we can understand each other and our strengths in dealing with teaching learning situations we coordinate the responsibility of our expertise and our roles and we explore and use varieties of scheduling the arrangements so when we talk about orientation of teachers in co teaching we also give emphasis on comprehending multicultural and multilingual backgrounds of our colleagues so that we can deal with different components of instruction effectively we explore the cross cultural perspectives of learners as well as we prepare ourselves on the basis of our own cross cultural perspectives we arrange the classrooms to promote collaborative activities so that learners get varieties of experiences and they get opportunity to appreciate the teachers best performances we develop alternative strategies for achievement of learning objectives of different curricular areas and we fulfill the learners needs dear friends these are the characteristics of co teaching now we are talking about integration of technology for group learning activities as you know technology i specifically say about information and communication technology as we know we have different kinds of competencies one competency is related to the knowledge part that is the content area competency second area competency is related to teaching learning principles or pedagogical skills third area is related to information and communication technology competencies how these three dimensions can be integrated with each other is shown on this particular chart so when we talk about integration of technology with the 
content knowledge. We are talking about integration of technology with principles of pedagogy and we talk about integration of technology for making our teaching learning system a success. So in this area we can see that we call it as technology knowledge. Second is the knowledge of different of the technology ranging from technology to low technologies to high technologies. Second is content knowledge related to technology. The knowledge of content is to be linked to its technology. Third is pedagogical knowledge that is to be linked with technology. So all these three aspects are the component of techno-pedagogical content knowledge. So pedagogical content knowledge, then competencies to use pedagogical principles to teach different content areas, technological content knowledge that deals with knowledge of technology suitable to teach a particular content, and third is technological pedagogical knowledge so that we can integrate technological knowledge with content knowledge and the competencies of the principles of teaching. So technological pedagogical content knowledge, it covers the competencies to be possessed by teachers about suitable interaction of technology in teaching any curricular content area with appropriate pedagogical principles. Dear friends, as we know, information and communication technology is an emerging area and teachers' role in this context is very much significant and we must keep up with new technologies. We must have various ways and strategies for developing our understanding of subject contents, our understanding with technology and principles of teaching, and we must adapt our teaching based upon what our students currently understand and do not understand. So we must know how to select effective teaching competencies, integrating content knowledge with pedagogical knowledge and technology knowledge. So in the context of encouraging group-based cooperative learning activities, a teacher will have to provide the support system with efficient and effective means by integrating technological resources, learning principles, instructional pedagogical facilities, and the experiences related to curricular areas. Thank you very much.